Right then guys, it's PSL here and I'm here for part 17 in my Motorsport Manager Let's Play here at the Continental Super Cup in the 2023 season. Now this episode is actually slightly different to the previous ones because this one is a post-commentary because, well I'm going to try and get through the entire season in this video and so to stop this video from being ridiculously long, I'm post-commentating it so then we can get through all 11 races really quickly and I plan to do the same thing for the next episode, maybe the episode after, I don't know. The last episode or two will probably be live comms again, but to get through this season quickly, because we know that we should win this season comfortably, considering we won the other Tier 2 Championship, so knowing that, we should win this championship quite easily. So I just feel we'll post-commentate this episode, get it done, get it over with, and then we can move on to Tier 1 in the next episode. So with that out of the way, it's on to how the season actually progressed, and obviously the game in the pre-season tries to sell you car upgrades. The first one we got offered, and the first one I took, was the 3% aerodynamic upgrade, and I know I've said this entire series you should go for the more expensive upgrades, and I still stand by that, but I needed the money we had to be able to afford upgrades to our facilities, young driver program, etc. So I got the cheap one because I wanted to improve our car, but I also needed the money to upgrade the rest of our team, hence why I only got the 3% aerodynamic upgrade. And then later on, the game offers a 6% manufacturing upgrade, again the smallest of the two it offered, but again, I chose the smaller one for the same reason. Another thing that happened before we entered the first race of the season was we got a new head of design, because looking at our engineers, our head of design was the worst of our engineers, and he just wasn't really as good as the other engineers, so I thought we'll get rid of him, we'll get someone else, so we have got someone better, and the new head of design meant that our car rating went up from 78 to 79, so our car did improve through all of these upgrades and changes. The final thing I did in pre-season was spend my winnings from the previous championship, and there was a comment in the previous episode which said that I should upgrade facilities rather than the young driver program, so I upgraded my aerodynamic and design facilities with the manufacturing one coming about later on. So with all of that out of the way, it's on to the first race of the season at Alice Springs, and we qualified first and tenth, which isn't too surprising, obviously Billy Dan, our clear driver number one, so he's going to be uber quick, and Jalen Fredgale, I know I said in the previous episode, Feedgale, but I actually read his name properly, and it turns out it's Jalen Fredgale, so my apologies to Jalen, but anyway, Fredgale qualified 10th, but again, it's slightly worse than expected, but we can't expect much better from him, considering he is a driver number 2. So that was qualifying, and then the race was just as interesting as qualifying. Billy Dan finished 1st, 21 seconds ahead of the guy in 2nd, and Jalen finished in 7th. So that race was completely and utterly boring, one of the downsides of having a dominant driver number one. But anyway, the Constructors' Championship, and we're leading that, with Cobra Grand Prix in second, who are five points behind us, and Aussie Engineering are in third, only one point behind Cobra Grand Prix. So on to race two of 11 this season, and we're in Seattle. And in Seattle, unsurprisingly, once again, Billy Dan got pole position, and Jalen got 8th, slightly better than we saw in Alice Springs. And again this race was completely boring, one of the downsides with the driver number 1 thing is you do have such a dominant driver number 1, it's ridiculous. Although Jalen had a good result this race as we were on the hards for the last stint of the race, having done 3 previous stints on the softs, and that was actually a good strategy call as Billy Dan unsurprisingly got 1st, but Jalen got 5th, so that's a pretty decent result considering he's a driver number 2. Behind Billy Dan, both Aussie Engineering's came 3rd and 4th, and it means we're still leading the Constructors' Championship, 8 points ahead of Aussie Engineering. Race 3 of 11 took place in New York, and we qualified 1st and 5th, so that's really good, 1st and 5th. I mean, Jalen, I'm expecting him to finish, you know, middle of the points, but 5th is really good. I mean, it's, depending on how you look at it, top half of the points places, so that's really good for Jalen there. And interestingly, a Fong Motorsport driver of Reresby, I think that's how you pronounce it, or maybe it's Reresby, Reresby, I don't know, but either way, a Fong Motorsport driver, interestingly, qualified second. Into the race, and annoyingly, Billy Dan lost a few places over the course of the race, but heading into the first pit stop period, our super, super quick pit crew 
meant that Dan jumped a couple of the people in the pits, which was great. And then even better, later on into the race, once Dan found some pace, he passed the Aussie engineering driver of Dunster for the lead, as he had previously jumped us on the hard tyres. In the end, the race finished with Billy Dan unsurprisingly taking first, with Jalen in ninth. But rather annoyingly, the Aussies finished in second and third, so they're clearly our main championship rival, and because they finished second and third, they're now only two points behind us in the Constructors' Championship. Race 4 took place at the familiar Durango circuit, with qualifying ending with Billy Dan on pole position unsurprisingly, but Fred Gale finished in qualifying in second. That's an astonishing result, I mean sure, he was 2.9 seconds behind Dan, but despite that massive gap, no one could slot in between him and Dan, so Fred Gale to take second, massive achievement for him considering he is a driver number 2, which is quite tragic really for his career. Anyway, we finally had our first properly interesting race this season, as the safety car came out on lap 3, which did leave a bit of a strategy dilemma, but we decided to come into the pit, and it meant that we came out in 10th and 14th, so we lost tons of track position there. However, rather stupidly, the other teams decided to pit in later on, which is completely stupid, I don't know why they either didn't stay out or just pitted when we pitted, but either way, it meant that our two guys were in third and fourth. And then even better, once the safety car came in on the end of lap six, the two guys ahead of us pitted, so it means that Billy Dan and Jalen Fredgale were in a one-two position for Scuderia PSL. Our guys then pitted at the end of lap 11 and came out on the hard tyres, so one of the few times we used the hard tyres all season. And Fred Gale did drop down to fourth, which is a bit disappointing, but then again, I mean, what can we really expect from him? Especially as the two guys who passed him are our arch nemesis in this season, the Aussie Engineerings. And they were on the soft tyres as well at the time, so they had a massive advantage. And in fact, by the end of the race, even Billy Dan was coming under some pressure, but he just about held on to first. And that's only because both us and the Aussie Engineerings had extremely worn down tyres by the end of the race, so maybe if the Aussies run hard tyres, maybe they could have won the race, but who knows really, that's just all speculative. Fred Gale though, astonishingly held on to fourth place, and quite comfortably as well, 32 seconds ahead of Rerezby, or however you pronounce it, the Fong Motorsport driver. In between race 4 and race 5, we got a new head of aerodynamics and manufacturing as the previous head's contract ran out, and we know that the engineer market develops all the time, and we knew we could get better ones, so we did get better ones, but our car rating did stay at 79. Approaching the halfway mark of the season, race 5 at Milan, and it was a wet qualifying in Milan which could have been interesting apart from the fact it didn't really change the proceedings at all really. We still qualified 1st and ninth, which has happened previously this season, and behind Dan there were a mix of Aussie Engineering's Cobra Grand Prix and even Hamilton drivers, so not really a lot changed apart from Hamilton being up there. After the previous race was really interesting though, this race was dry all the way, it was really boring, not a lot happened, we stuck out on the softs all of the way which normally works for us, but this time it was a mistake, as Billy Dan didn't finish first this race. I know, shock horror, the dominant driver of Billy Dan didn't come first. He came fourth though, so a reasonable result, but it meant we missed a sponsor objective, and really it was just quite a bad race, because the three people who finished ahead of Dan did one stop less than us, because they went on the hard tyres, which was a quicker strategy, but you know, I mean, oh well, we won't worry about the strategy anymore. Anyway, Bridgum, the Aussie engineering driver, finished first that race. Weiser, or Weiser, or depending on his nationality, however you pronounce his name, the Cobra Grand Prix driver, anyway, he finished second. And one of the best names I've ever seen for a racing driver, aside from Scott Speed, Quick, in the Hamilton car, finished third, so living up to his name there. But worryingly, this is the first time all season that we haven't led the Constructors' Championship as Aussie engineering overtook us in the Constructors' Championship and now lead by 9 points. Race 6 was at a very familiar venue, Montpellier and Billy Dan once again met the sponsor objective, got us some good money by qualifying on pole position, whereas Jalen finished in 11th, his worst qualifying of the season thus far, but obviously qualifying doesn't matter too much, it's the race that matters more. Behind Dan though in qualifying, it was Rerezby who finished in 2nd for Fong Motorsport 
and Bridgum, the Aussie engineering driver, qualified third, which is slightly worrying. Into the race though, and at the end of lap 4, we had stormy conditions come in, so we pitted that lap, that lap, for the wet tyres, which none of our main rivals did, they pitted a lap later, and that was a strategy call that massively worked in our favour, Dan entered first place, and Fred Gale, who bearing in mind qualified 11th, ended up moving into second place by pitting that one lap earlier for the wet tyres, but considering it was stormy conditions, I'm surprised everyone left it so late to pit onto the wets. Eventually the track does dry up as at the end of lap 15 we pit for the soft tyres as it got dry not long before that point. In the end Billy Dan once again took first place and the win at Montpellier but Fred Gale thanks to his pretty good pace meant he finished third so it's a double podium for the first time all season so a fantastic race at Montpellier with Maris for Cobra Grand Prix coming in second which is good it's not an Aussie engineering driver which is really what we needed. Both Aussie engineering drivers finished considerably lower, but anyway, because they finished so badly this race, we're now leading the Constructors' Championship by 19 points. And we got even more good news after that race, because the headquarter upgrades came in for their aerodynamic and design facilities, so that meant I could employ an extra 10 people per department. There was no upgrade to the car performance, unfortunately, but that's only because we basically reached the peak of Tier 2, However, employing those extra 20 people cost $10 million, and we had $11.9 million, which is good considering we had very little heading into the season, but obviously Billy Dan meeting all the qualifying and race objectives, well almost all of them, because of how super, super quick he is. Um, it meant basically Billy Dan basically single-handedly funded those 20 people's jobs. Firmly into the second half of the season, race 7 at Singapore, and we qualified first and fourth, so... Once again, a good job for Billy Dan, but also a surprisingly good job for Fred Gale, so really good result for him there, with one Cobra Grand Prix and one Aussie Engineering between our two drivers. And actually this race was quite an interesting one, because lap 4 the safety car came out. Fred Gale pitted immediately, which meant he dropped down to the back of the field, but he had fresh tyres. Whereas Dan pitted a lap later, Dan came out of the pits in 8th, and Fred Gale through all of that pit stop mayhem, came out on 6, so actually, Fred Gale jumped his teammate there. That's not going to last too long, obviously, but Fred Gale was just in the right place at the right time, and we were just about able to drag him into the pit a lap earlier than most others. The start of lap 7, and the safety car came in, and the others ahead of us, who were on the hard tyres, pitted instantly, so it meant that our guys were instantly catapulted right to the front of the field, with Dan being in 3rd place, and Fred Gale for I believe the first time in his career with Scuderia PSL is leading a Grand Prix. However, that didn't last too long as our drivers swapped places so Billy Dan was leading and Fred Gale was in second. But then, on the second to last lap, Fred Gale dropped a fourth behind both Aussie engineering cars so our arch rivals once again have defied Fred Gale but we can't exactly look too unfavourably on Fred Gale considering well his contract and his position in the team. Race 8 was at Nagano and qualifying there saw us end up 1st once again and 12th so not a good day for Fred Gale there. And also both Aussie engineering guys qualified 6th and 7th so not an amazing day for them either so heading into the race things are looking quite good. Into lap 8 of the race and our guys are 1st and 3rd no surprise which way round they are as they haven't stopped yet because the rain is forecast to come, or rather to stop, very soon. So we're just braving out there for as long as we can, hoping we can stop one less time than everyone else. Fortunately, the rain does stop when it's forecast to, and we pit for the first time that race, and we come out running the dry tyres, so we're in a very good position, both in track position and tyre compound, for the rest of the race. And obviously as the laps ticked by, Fred Gale inevitably lost places, but still came 5th. While Dan unsurprisingly won again, but both Aussie engineering guys got 3rd and 6th, so an okay day for them. Leaving Nagano, we're leading the Constructors' Championship by 35 points. Race 9 was at Sochi, Russia, and qualifying was interesting there, because there was rain mid-session, and amazingly, lap times were being beaten while it was still raining, which was quite weird to see, and Dan actually bettered his fastest lap, and Fred Gale even briefly moved up to second in qualifying, before being displaced 
to his final qualifying position of third, as very shortly after our guys were beating their personal best, the track got so wet that no one could beat their own times or even match us, because obviously we qualified when the track was, well, bone dry and then bettered our times when it was starting to get wet. At the start of the race though, something amazing happened. Fred Gale moved up temporarily into the lead of the race. That didn't last long, Dan repassed him a few seconds later, but Fred Gale really showing how good of a driver he is and he's definitely been screwed over by the contract we've given him, but we've got to look at it this way. Fred Gale has been astonishingly quick considering he's a driver number two and Billy Dan has done very well as a driver number one. However, things quickly fell down for Fred Gale as lap 15, he suffered a mechanical failure from third place. A podium position, that would have been amazing for Fred Gale. Regardless, Billy Dan's car stayed out of trouble, had perfect reliability, and he was able to win the race at Sochi, with interestingly, both Cobra Grand Prix cars, followed by both Aussie engineering cars, right up behind. So I'd like to thank Cobra Grand Prix for beating Aussie Engineering, which is certainly going to help us in the Constructors' Championship. And now I rarely pay attention to the Drivers' Championship on this game, but I feel that we need to after this race, because looking at the Drivers' Championship, and Billy Dan has officially taken the Drivers' title with two races to go in the 2023 season of the Continental Super Cup. So Billy Dan, as I said, delivered on almost every occasion has made us a ton of money and he's taken the driver's championship, so amazing stuff for Billy Dan there. Meanwhile, Fred Gale is in fifth in the driver's championship, which is pretty good considering he's a driver number two, and especially considering he had a car failure this race. More importantly though, Constructors' Championship with 38 points ahead of Aussie Engineering, with only two races left to go, so the chances of us losing the Constructors' Championship are pretty slim. Race 10 and the second to last race of the season is at Sao Paulo and now Sao Paulo once again taking the honour of being the second to last Grand Prix. Anyway qualifying ended there with Billy Dan once again taking pole position and Fred Gale taking 8th. And into the race and it was quite a boring race but towards the end of it the rain started falling down but very slowly. And while almost all of the rest of the field pitted for wet while it was still very dry, I want to add, we stayed out on the dries because I looked and the track was not that damp, certainly not that bone in time. And I guess the rest of the field were just hoping the rain was going to pick up an in intensity and the track was just going to get wet very quickly, but it didn't as there were too few laps left to go and staying out on the dries paid for us as Billy Dan won once again, but Fred Gale moved up from his midfield position and because everyone else pitted for the wets, he was able to take a comfortable second place finish, 22 seconds ahead of the third place driver Maris for Cobra Grand Prix. So, a 1-2 finish for the team, Fred Gale taking second. I think we have to say Fred Gale possibly driver of the season because considering his contract, considering the resources we're giving him, he's doing very, very well. Anyway, moving on to the final race of the season at the Doha circuit, which is an oval circuit. And I do love the oval circuits. I mean, Indianapolis has been a happy hunting ground for us over the years. Here wasn't a happy hunting ground. And while Dan, in the end, got pole position once again, Fred Gale got 11th, one of his worst qualifyings of the season. And then, just to make matters worse, heading into the race, Billy Dan lost his front wing, which cost him a lot of time and also possibly the win, although the win at that moment in time was by no means guaranteed for him. In the end, it was just a recovery drive for Dan having lost his front wing and having to pit early for him to get a new one. He did finish 5th and Fred Gale finished 10th. In what was a very disappointing race, Dan's worst finish of the season and I believe Fred Gale's worst finish of the season. So with all the races done, it's time to properly look at the championship standings at the end of the 2023 season in the Continental Super Cup. And in the end, Billy Dan won the Drivers' Championship by almost 100 points from the Aussie engineering driver of Bridgum, who finished in second, Bridgum just beating Dunster there. Fred Gale finished the season in sixth, which is really, really good. I can't really have asked much more from him, considering he is our first and probably only ever driver number two within the team, 
And considering the fact that he's a driver number two and considering how quick the Aussie engineering drivers were and considering the fact he had a reliability issue one race, finishing sixth from the Drivers' Championship really is quite good and I would still have to say driver of the season. On to the Constructors' Championship and despite the really disappointing race at Doha, we won the Constructors' Championship by 44 points over Aussie Engineering with Cobra Grand Prix and Fong Motorsport behind them. But let's look down the bottom end of the Constructors' Championship because I never do in this series, but let's give a shout out to Murray Motorsport, I assume named after Murray Walker, who knows, it's either Murray Walker or... I don't know why I said that actually because I can't think of who else would be named after, Andy Murray, I don't even, why am I even saying this? Anyway, Murray Motorsport, whoever they're named after, Scored no points all season, so um, so really good stuff for them there. Actually, Murray Motorsport could be named after Gordon Murray, the former designer for Brabham, but Gordon Murray was quite a good designer, so if the team was named after him, or if he even had some involvement with the team, I don't think they would have finished last, but who knows. Anyway, we end the season with $10 million in the bank, basically recouping the money that we spent on the 20 employees earlier on in the season. And also, once you consider we got our $50 million prize money for winning the Continental Super Cup, we've now got $60 million in the bank. But more interestingly, it's finally time to move on to the top tier. Tier 1 and moving into the World Grand Prix Championship for a mega 16 race season, that is going to be an interesting championship. But looking back at the season we just had, let's thank Billy Dan for getting pole position at every single race. I mean, never mention the fact that Dan won all but two Grand Prix this year, and the two he didn't win, one we messed up in the strategy, and one he lost his front wing mid-race, so Billy Dan really was uber quick this year, but then again, he was a driver number one, so... Considering he's a driver number one and considering his driver stats for a tier two driver, what can you expect? The proof is on screen. Billy Dan got us a ton of money, paid for 20 people's jobs, got $10 million in the bank as well. And because of that, we bought the second to last headquarters upgrade for our manufacturing facility now as well. And also, we fully upgraded our young driver program, so hopefully we can attract the best drivers in the world. So hopefully... Come the end of the first season in the World Grand Prix Championship, we'll attract a driver with all driving stats in 99, which is the best you can get in the game, and if we can get a driver with all 99 driver stats, which will come round eventually, if we can attract one of them in the team, then yeah, basically we're golden. So as I already said, the next season we'll be building up the final foundations of the team, using probably a driver number one to rack up the money, and then we'll just wait, keep checking our young driver program, hope a young driver with maximum driving stats comes in, get them, and then we'll hopefully ace tier 1. Well, that's, that's the plan anyway, we'll have to see how well that goes. So yeah guys, that's the end of the 2023 season, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and I hope you enjoyed this post-commentary kind of season review. And I reckon I'll do the next season, or the next two seasons as post-commentaries. The World Grand Prix Championship, I reckon I'll do them as post-commentaries because they're 16 race seasons. Doing that as a live commentary, that's going to be mega to get through. I mean, that's, that's going to be two long parts, at least. So, if you guys want me to do another post-commentary, be sure to leave that down in the comments. And I do want to do the final championship will probably be a live commentary, unless you guys prefer the post-commentary, but... The last championship will probably be a live commentary just so we can get that extra passion, emotion and live reactions in there. So yeah guys, be sure to leave down in the comments whether you want me to do post commentary for the next couple of seasons. And yeah guys, I'll see you in the next episode where we start our first season in Tier 1. So I'll see you then.